Lawmakers in Washington have expressed their outrage after a leaked audio recording showed President Trump pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State to find enough votes to overturn his election defeat in the state. The conversation, first obtained by The Washington Post, shows the outgoing president issuing threats to his fellow Republican, who insists once again that the data Trump has is wrong. Let's take a listen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. The people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. For more on this, a little earlier, I spoke to our Washington correspondent, Ketavan Gorgistani. Simply uh, very uh, concrete and clear uh, evidence of uh, what uh, Donald Trump has been doing for the past few months, even before uh, the election actually uh, took place, uh, making baseless claims about uh, mass voter fraud in the United States, attacking the integrity of the electoral uh, process, uh, pressuring election officials uh, to do things that are uh, on the verge or quite simply illegal uh, to do, and threatening them when uh, they don't go along with what has been saying. And go back to uh, the summer of 2020 uh, during the campaign when Donald Trump said the only way he would lose this election was if uh, the election was stolen. And this has all been part of that plan, which is that uh, he undermined uh, the trust in the electoral system so that when he lost, it would look like uh, what he had been claiming all along, which is uh, that this election was uh, fraudulent. And he's pressuring uh, all also lawmakers, whether they're in the House or in a Congress, to try to go along. And that's why you're seeing uh, all these lawmakers going along with uh, this idea of objecting to uh, those results on January 6th, even if they know uh, very well that this is going nowhere and that on January 6th, Mike Pence is going to confirm those results. And on January 20th, uh, Joe Biden uh, will be inaugurated as uh, the president. But uh, Donald Trump simply still hasn't conceded and it doesn't seem to want to do so. The question here in Washington is whether he actually believes that this was fraudulent or he's preparing the future outside of the White House. And Ketavan, all eyes are on the state of Georgia now uh, as we look ahead to two key Senate races taking place in the state on Tuesday. Yes, because that's uh, simply the balance of power in uh, the Senate that is at stake with these two Senate runoffs in uh, Georgia. If the Democrats manage to win both of those seats, uh, then it will be 50-50 in the Senate. And that means that uh, the vice president, Kamala Harris, uh, will be the tiebreaker. And therefore, the Democrats will control uh, the Senate as well as uh, the House. Uh, if the Republicans manage to win at least one of the two seats, then they will hold on to a slim majority and uh, the uh, current uh, Senate majority leader Mitch McConnell will stay on as the leader uh, in the next uh, Senate. Now, uh, the race is extremely close, neck and neck. The lead has been going back and forth in both races, uh, the one between the incumbent David Perdue and John Ossoff and the one between incumbent Kelly Leffler and uh, Raphael uh, Warnock. The Democrats once again are counting on huge turnout, and the numbers have been really uh, good so far with early voting especially among the African-American community. So that's a good sign for Democrats, but Republicans once again counting on the day of voting, on January 5th. Uh, the problem is the muddying of the message on the Republican side. At the same time, they're supporting the president, uh, attacking uh, the November election, saying that the electoral process is fraudulent, uh, but they are also asking their base, please do come out and vote and vote for us.